Game Plus. We're back. We are back. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you? Who the hell are you? I'm Brendan. This is uh, the New Game Plus used video game store, Kingston, New Hampshire. You are watching or listening to the New Game Plus podcast with my buddy, John. Yeah. And I'm John. He just said that. So <laughs> yeah, welcome to New Game Plus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This place rules. And we are here to talk to you about video games. And specifically, today we are talking about one of my favorite genres, one of everybody's favorite genres, yeah. uh, Metroidvanias. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the one that's near and dear to us both. Oh yeah, definitely. This yeah. was, uh, so you might have seen our uh, top five Mario games of all time episode. Similarly, this is going to be our top five Metroidvanias of all time. Yeah, yeah. So we'll get into it, see if there's some... Overlap, some disagreements. Yeah. I, I'm going to make a prediction. I think number one will be the same this time. I think if it's not number one, it'll be number... I think if, if our number ones aren't the same and our number twos aren't the same, they'll be flip-flopped, I think. Okay. Yeah, I have a very strong feeling that that'll be the oh, case. Oh, now I'm intrigued. Yeah. All right. So in <clears throat> for maybe people who don't know what a Metroidvania is, if this is sort of your first time... How would you define a Metroidvania? Let's make sure our criteria is yeah, aligned. Yeah, that, um, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, it's, it's got to have platforming elements. Yep. There's an exploration element. Typically, I would argue... Would you say typically side-scrolling? I would say side-scrolling, 2D okay. side-scrolling. Yep. But you could make an argument that that isn't necessary. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's like, I guess that's a... That muddies the waters a bit, though. It does, yeah. yeah. You're getting too far out of that once you go away from the 2D side-scrolling. Yeah. So I, I would say let's, let's you know, stick to the 2D. And then I would also say there needs to be some element of character progression as far as movement or exploration ability-wise. Yeah, like a leveling up system kind of leveling thing. Leveling up system, skills. unlocking a double jump, wall climb, something like that. Okay, so some sort of skill progression or leveling system right. where your power incrementally gets more noticeable. Yeah, not only that your power increases, but your your abilities as you progress through the game allow you to unlock things from all the different levels. Including new areas. Right, the yep. new areas. So, you know, the first level, like I wouldn't consider a game of Metroidvania if you could go everywhere in the first area right out of the box. Okay, and that's more you, of just like a platformer. Right, exactly, okay. yeah. If you wanted, you know, if it's a Metroidvania, you gotta go and find item X in order to get to secret area in the first area. Okay, and this is a, this is a very, so also, um, this, the, 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 by definition of the term, um, this is a sort of a, a category that's been created by typically like by Metroid originally, mm -hmm. and then one would argue the Castlevania element didn't really come in until nearly like a decade later with Symphony of the Night. Correct. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that those two sort of things become uh, it's, it's really more of just like a Metroid, honestly. But the yeah. Castlevania Symphony of the Night really took things to the next level. It did. And then that's where I guess you get the melding of those two terms. I think that anything. Symphony of the Night being like the quintessential you know, example of the genre is yeah. why they call it a Metroidvania. Yeah. Because, yeah. So I, I'm really looking forward to this. This is yeah. something that, like, when we came up with the idea for this, I started racking my brain immediately because there's, it's, this genre has gotten huge over the past, like, I mean, I would say decade, but more specifically the past few years, I feel like it's really, mm -hmm. really gotten like out of control. There's so many of these kinds of games out there now. Yeah, if you're an indie dev, you're probably making like a, <laughs> you know, something <laughs> either. I mean, I personally like Salt and Sanctuary. I know you have mixed feelings on yeah. it, but that's, you know, 
It's a Metroidvania mixed with Dark Souls is the elevator pitch for that game. Yeah, would you consider that to be a Metroidvania by definition, or is that kind of... Honestly, I don't think that it does. Yeah, is that just because of the other element that kind of adds like a whole different... adds like that different aspect to the gameplay, or... I would what say makes that different? it lacks it because of... And this is just going off of, like, I've played Salt and Sanctuary years ago, so maybe I'm completely wrong on this. But from my recollection, there wasn't that backtracking element okay. to it that I feel like you have to have that in order to be part of it. Yeah. Like, it plays like, you know, a Metroidvania. Yeah. It has, like, that, you know, feel of a Dark Souls game. There is that difficulty, but there isn't that going back to, you know, the first area to unlock this and whatnot. So that's yeah. why I wouldn't count it. That's fair. I haven't no. played that in so long either. Yeah, I haven't either, but no. it just, you know, came to mind because, yeah, every indie dev out there is making, you know, a Metroidvania yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, or something similar. And there's some great ones. There, dude, there's so many good ones. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I guess we'll just ju jump right into it and no. we'll have you kick things off. But what is, your, what is your number five? Number five, Super Metroid. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, that's yeah. way more down the list than I ever would have thought. I'm so curious now for the rest of how this is going to pan out. Please elaborate. Like, I'm not trying to say, like, the top five, like, these are the best, you know? I'm trying to say these are the ones that I enjoyed the most. Yeah. So my list may be a bit more personalized than some people might, you know, think as far as, like, you know, this came up with it. It should be, you know, number one or number two or whatnot, but um, it did but it's also limited by its time. Everything that came after it on my list, like spoilers, it's the first one, so everything after it is gonna be newer, no. was able to build on what Super Metroid did. So it gets on the list basically because it was the progenitor of the genre. Wow, that's... It's a great game. Oh, it's an amazing it's, game. Yeah, it's I'm, amazing, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm so surprised that that's your number five. That totally changes all of my expectations for what <laughs> might be coming, honestly. Good, good, uh, yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, shit. Um, yeah, opening salvo. Yeah, that's, what, that's uh, <laughs> coming out swinging. Yep. Uh, my number five is going to be Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Is that the first one? Second one. Is it? Yep, that is the second one. Uh, the Blind okay. Forest is the first one. Right, right, right. Okay. Which, oddly yep. enough, I haven't played because I played them backwards not knowing yep. <laughs> which one was which when I played Nice, them. nice. Um, yeah, I just recently completed this game, and it's just absolutely stunning. Uh, yeah, visual. Yeah, yeah, visually, mm -hmm. uh, musically, just yep. as as a piece of art in general. Mm -hmm. uh, the story is super minimalist and engaging, and really hard hitting. It's got a really strong emotional core, which is like escalated more by the art style. Yeah, uh, that game is just—it's beautiful. It is a work of art, and the progression and the powers you get, and mm -hmm. uh, just like the it—it it really goes the extra mile to throw some really frustrating and challenging uh, platforming elements through uh, throughout as well. So yeah. you really have that progression of power and strength and it really tests your skills. It was a very, very frustrating game. And uh, some of the, some of the uh, exploration elements were things I actually had to look up because I was just, I had no, no idea where idea. to go. Right. Yep. And then when I look it up, I'm like, I never would have mm -hmm. figured that out. Yeah. Uh, it's it's just it, it is a masterwork and and that that really strong story was something I wasn't expecting. Like usually the weakest part of a Metroidvania is the story, right? right. Um, but this one has this really emotional, uh, engaging tale that just uh, by the time the end of it, I was got a little blubbery at the end because right, the yeah. ending was just really really hard hitting. Yeah, I need game. to actually I need to check that one out because I um, I actually started playing the other Ori game. Yeah. And I would argue that that didn't, I mean, I, 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 it wasn't for me. It was one of those games. And I would argue it doesn't fit the criteria for a Metroidvania, mm -hmm. but I know that they changed a lot in the second one. So I, I want to play through it, and then I want, you know, down the road when you play the first one, yeah. to, you know, we can 
circle back around and see our thoughts on on that. Yeah, I'm definitely curious uh, about that because, like you had mentioned that, and mm -hmm. I had accidentally. I wonder if like my opinion would be changed had I right. played the first one right. instead. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I have heard very good things though. I just haven't gotten around to actually. Beautiful game. I yeah. think I think you'd really like the it. The art style in the first one was incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the first one. It, the first one's uh, Kate, Caitlin's playing the first one right now. Yep, and uh, it's it's. It's almost as good looking. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. But yeah. Nice. Number four. Number four. Let me think. Number four is going to be Harmony Dissonance. Which most people, GBA, Castlevania games, they're going to say, you know, the Soma Cruise one is the best. Yeah. But I don't know. Harmony Dissonance, I just felt like, was such an incredible Castlevania game. You know, especially on a GBA. Yeah. Like, I feel like modern, when you look at gaming from a modern perspective, there's, and we've gone over this before, if you want to see our thoughts, we had a handheld episode where we go more in depth, but obviously there was that, you know, whole stigma that handheld games aren't full games yeah. or not as good as a sit-down console game. And I feel like Harmony of Dissonance was just like almost perfect as far as a Metroidvania goes. That's a great choice, and uh, I, I love that game myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think, for me, I think Donna Sorrow beats that one out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, Harmony of Distance is an amazing game. Like, that game, like, that's as rich and full uh, Game Boy Advance game as you could possibly make. Yeah. That game was huge. Was it Donna Sorrow or Aria of Sorrow that was on? I think Aria of Sorrow is the Game Boy Advance... I think there was an Aria of Sorrow. I think Dawn of Sorrow. Yeah. I could be wrong. I think Dawn is the DS one, right? No, Aria of Sorrow is Game Boy Advance because I have the collection and Aria of Sorrow is, is on, on the collection. The, okay. um, but Dawn of Sorrow, I think, is the, the name of the DS one that came out, which mm. is the one. I love that one. Yep. That yep. one was nuts. Yeah, that's another good one. But yeah, that, that whole series in general is... Right, yeah. Like, whichever, like, if you, it's like... I don't know, like whichever one of those you were to tell me is your favorite, I'd be like, okay. Right, yeah. yeah. A lot of it will come down to personal taste because, I mean, other than, uh, what was it, Circle of the Moon? Yeah. Like, everyone says Circle of the Moon is, like, the, the worst of the bunch. It's the week, I'm playing through the that one right scene. now, yeah. and it's it's definitely, revisiting it, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's fun. It is. But there, it doesn't, it, it's more basic than the others went on to be. So it even even after Symphony, then it's like a step down. Right. It reminds me like movement and action wise of the old Castlevania, like the yes. NES Castlevanias. That's, That's what it reminds stupid. me of. Like, yeah. You know, once you got into Alucard, you had a fluidity of motion and, you know, there was just so much more that you could do equipment wise than yeah. just, you know, a Belmont with a whip. Yeah, it's very, the it circles very rigid. Right, yeah, it, is, it, yeah. it moves very, it's very janky the way yeah. it moves, yeah, 100%. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Richter mode and all the other. Almost, yes, that's yeah. a perfect, yeah, that's yeah. a perfect yeah, way of describing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Heart made distance, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number four for me, mm -hmm. I think would have to be, um, I think number four would be Sundered. Sundered? Yeah. Sundered is by a company uh, called Thunder Lotus. Mm -hmm. uh, they made a game called Jotun, which was this really uh, beautiful, like Norse mythology sort of 3D overhead kind of game. Yep. yep. Um, and they also made a game more recently and more commonly uh, popular called Spirit Fair. Yep. Which I, I couldn't get into Spirit Fair. That just wasn't my jam. But a lot of people love that one. Mm hmm. But uh, yeah, Sundered is this really, really amazing uh, eldritch horror yep. style uh, Metroidvania. Mm. And it has easily my favorite of the uh, uh, progression systems. Like this, there's like this whole, this area where you have to go where you accrue like 
uh, currency, essentially. Yep. Uh, XP or currency or points, whatever you want to call it. Right. And you have to go back to this one room. And it's cool because, like, when you walk into the room, the camera does this trick where it, like, pans out. Uh, and it's just like this giant skill tree system nice. that's almost yeah. reminiscent of um, the one in Final Fantasy, I want to say 10, like that spear spheres. system. Yep. It's very similar to the yep. spear system and mm -hmm. it's just, it's massive. And it's hard to unlock everything, and right. uh, it's it's very rewarding. And every time you you know upgrade like your strength or get a new skill, yep. it feels it's like you feel that sense of accomplishment, mm -hmm. which is awesome because it is so hard to progress after a certain amount of time because they cost so much to acquire them. So there's a lot of grinding and there's a lot of like so it's like an exponential sort of yeah. you know the first unlock's easy but as you go on it's yeah. just yeah yeah it gets, I like it's, that it's stuff. very yeah. punishing yeah. but it's also very fair yeah um, and it's just beautiful like the game like the animation's amazing right they make very very uh, gorgeous games that they they it's a small dev team mm -hmm. and they just sink like all of their effort into all of their games so like each one of their games is like a, a beautifully crafted complete cohesive piece that yep. just feels like somebody's you know child that they just sort nice. of put all of their effort into yeah i remember you telling me about it and i definitely want to check it out it's Dude, definitely it's, it's, on the list yeah. it's nasty like yeah. the, the story is really it's got a very minimal story but like the story that's there is very cool like you'll unlock these like these like old eldritch like texts and like mm -hmm. when you when like they're read out loud and like the whole screen gets like cloudy and dark and like the voice that delivers them is like just super <laughs> evil and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in like another language and it's just yep. it's super awesome oh wow yeah it's a very 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 cool game that i feel like doesn't get it anywhere near the amount of attention and recognition it deserves right what platform did you uh, i personally have it on the switch but i do believe it's available on uh, pretty much anything I like think. playstation xbox yeah. pc probably yeah one of those yeah nice yeah i definitely want to check that out i'm always on the there's a few like when we were looking through or when i was looking through rather that I came across where I was like, I need to play this. I just need to find the time. Yeah. Like there's a bunch on the list that I was just like, there was, what was it called? Ender Lilies. Have you heard of that one? I have not heard of that. It, it looked pretty intriguing. It's another indie dev Metroidvania where you play like this. You're the last priestess of this fallen, you know, world or whatever. But you come across these little like spirits that fight for you. So you don't really do the fighting yourself, but you find these, you know, shards or what, you know, doodads that you can have like a swordsman or you can switch it up and that's how your abilities swap in your fighting style. Hmm. Looks pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. And then what was the, um, the sci-fi one we were talking about? Uh, or is Axel that on Birch? your list? Yeah. That is on my list. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I just ruined it. Oh, that's okay. Well, I didn't ruin the number. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Are we on three now? Yes. Yeah. We, we can count backwards. Yeah. From five. Barely. Barely. <laughs> Don't tell them we edited that. Oh, no. <laughs> what's your, so, our rudimentary uh, counting skills aside, what's, uh, what's your number three? My number three, Portrait of Ruin. Yeah. Most people, I feel like, don't like Portrait of Ruin that for was some the reason. Third one? That was, that was second the one. second one on the DS. Yes, okay. Yeah. yeah. Order yeah. of Ecclesia that was, was the third, third one. one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Portrait of Ruin, I just feel like it was cool because I like in the Castlevania games when you're in the castle, mm -hmm. obviously, right? But in Portrait of Ruin, as the name suggests, there's paintings involved. And just like Super Mario 64, you can jump in the painting and then you're in another world. So you do have like, you know, your classic Symphony of the Night feeling castle crawl. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. but it's also broken up by these other sublevels where you're in, you know, a city or you're in ancient Egypt or a swamp and all this other stuff. So it feels really cool hopping in and out. Um, I personally really enjoyed the two protagonist system. Mm. For those who don't know, you can swap between Jonathan, who is the um, classical Belmont character, who's the melee fighter, and Charlotte, who casts spells. So instead of having your magic and melee on one, you have to pick basically. You can swap on the fly, but hmm. you know there is that strategic element to it. Um, all the sub weapons that you find, you can upgrade them to max, oh, and it changes cool. them. There's a ton of different weapons, so you know great swords, daggers, everything else. You have all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's really fun. There's a lot of different modes. You can play as Richter. You can play as an old axe armor, which is fun to try to, like, it's really hard yeah. to get through the game as an old axe armor. So, um, And I feel like it doesn't overdo the dual screen, which is one of the issues I had with the uh, Soma Cruise DS. Yeah. Every time you found, like, one of your, you know, demonic unlocks, you had to draw a little rune on the yeah. thing. And it's like, do I really need to pull out the stylus and do that? Like, come on. Yeah. Like, it was just one of those weird things with the DS, but... Yeah, no, Porsche Rune, number three. That's interesting. I need to. I know I need to play because I've played that, yep. and I don't remember half the things you just said about it. Yeah. Um, so I know I need to play that. I know I remember not liking Order of Ecclesia. I, me I remember not even finishing that one. Mm -hmm. But I know I need to revisit all. I think for me it was just because like Dawn of Sorrow was just like. I hope I'm saying that. Right. I hope it is Dawn of Sorrow. I hope so too. <laughs> but that one was like I remember that one just being so good. It was like. Uh, it was just kind of like it was almost like too much of a good thing for me with that mm -hmm. one because it just I liked that system and setup so much minus the DS tracing right 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 that I kind of just forgot the other ones and I know I've beaten Portrait of Ruin I just yeah. don't really remember it so right. I have to visit it again no I mean the the Soma Cruise ones were really cool like when you equip the three different you know demons that you've defeated oh, yeah. and you know yep. you get different powers based off of that it was like a great system yeah like I feel like it, those ones are. Highly, like, obviously, you know, everybody loves those ones and there's a reason for them. Like, they're really good games. Um, I just personally, like, you know, on my own, I would rather play Harmony of Dissonance or Portrait of Ruin if you sat me down with a GBA or a DS. That's totally fair, man. Yeah. Like, they're, they're great games. They are, yeah. And it's hard for me. Like, I was just trying to keep, like, I was trying to keep one Castlevania because there's just so many of oh, these why? styles. It's like, oh. I know, because, like, I could have a top five of those. Yeah, I mean, you there's could, just yeah. so many of yeah. them. Um, but yeah, like if we're, uh, you know, number three for my, myself yeah, would be, yeah. uh, Axiom Verge. I was talking about this one. I guess you mm -hmm. did play this one. Uh, I have heard everything in the world about Axiom Verge and I've just like, it's one of those things that I haven't gotten around to. Is it almost so, like ruined for you because you've heard so much about no, it? it? No, I haven't heard like... A lot, like, story-wise or everything, I've just heard, you know, you get to know your friends and what sort of games they do and don't like. Yeah. And all of my friends who love Metroidvanians are like, Axiom Verge is, like, you know, amazing. So I do need to play it. Yeah. I do worry a little bit that, you know, all of that great feedback right. from people yeah. I actually are <laughs> like, your opinion is usually, you know, correct on this sort of stuff. Like... I do worry that it, it's not going to live up to that sort of hype yeah. in my head now. It's tough. But um, it looks really cool. Like, I, I dig it. I'm not a big sci-fi person, Metroidvania-wise. Mm -hmm. um, just a personal preference thing. But, yeah, I'll probably check it out pretty soon, hopefully. Uh, I, yeah. I highly recommend that one. I, 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 too, feel like you'll dig that one. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like it, it, part of part of the allure of that one uh, for me was like it's it's got almost like a I don't even want to say sixteen bit it's almost like an eight bit yeah it's almost like somewhere between an eight and sixteen bit graphic style uh, the music's just awesome uh, the sense of progression in that one's really cool the mm -hmm. uh, all the items you get uh, just like some of the elements like the glitching and stuff like that the pixel glitching yep. and 
it, the story is really weird and dark and cool. Mm. Uh, similar to Sundered, it's got kind of like a sci-fi eldritch sort of thing. So okay. it mixes like that fantasy, that dark fantasy, but also Lovecraft, like, yeah, of, Lovecraft yeah, horror type yeah, element. Yeah. Um, and I just, I really, really enjoyed that game quite a bit. Like that was one of those. I think it was like the first one of those I'd played in a long time that genuinely felt like is it was doing like the base. Like the, it was doing like the base that it needed to do to fit a Metroidvania. Mm -hmm. There was something in that simplicity and how well it did it, and then sort of stylized it and made it its own. That kind of made it stand out and like right. really like mm -hmm. feel like something unique. Yeah. It was one of those really, really rare gems that I, I really want to revisit again. Yeah. And uh, I, I never played the sequel. I heard the sequel wasn't as good, but I, I definitely want to check it out anyway. Right. Yeah, I, I've heard that as well from, you know, people in the genre who, you know, Metroidvaniers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Vaniers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do want to check out Axiom Verge too. No, I think you dig it. I think that was developed by like one guy, if I'm not mistaken. I think wow. that, that whole game was just That's one always guy. impressive believe, anyway. when it's like, yeah. you know, a really small team because I just feel like it's so hyper focused when you have, you know, two or three at most people making a game. Like, that's one thing when I played Celeste, I was like, oh, this Celeste. is a tight game. Yeah. Like, the gameplay, you know, she must have spent so much time getting that, like, Pixel perfect movement, and it's yeah, that's you know, a beautiful game. Oh, it's incredible! It's a beautiful game. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad that you know I played that since what was that episode two or three or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that game is oh, so frustrating. That game's so hard. Yeah, game's yeah. so hard. <laughs> like I, yeah, we we talked about Celeste a lot now since. Yeah, but yeah, I feel I, like it's 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 that good and it's that mm -hmm. underappreciated that it, it's worth discussing. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the difficulty tuning in, like, and I'm not talking like the B sides or like just the normal story is perfect. Yeah, like it. There are parts that are going to get super frustrating. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like oh, this is like you have to have you know the craziest reaction times or whatever like it's not pixel perfect but it's some of the jumps are pretty close it's, at the end yeah it's pretty close yeah. and it is like i feel like it's going to test the patience and metal of it is. many many people who try to play that game i can yeah. see a lot of people like halfway through that game just being like no nah, i'm all set right but it, it reminds me of like the games we grew up with right yeah because there's like all right like for example there's what do you ever see like those crazy Mario before Super Mario Maker came out? People made custom Mario levels where yep. it was like you would have to do tool assisted to get through it. Like there's that modern super hard, and then there's like back in the day just playing through you know lost levels or something. Yeah, I feel like Celeste is that back in the day difficulty, at least through the story. Yeah, once you get to the B and C side, it's like yeah, no, I'm it's punishing. Yeah, yeah, I beat one of them, and I was like, I am done. I can't do this. Like, yeah, I, I also feel. Uh, I don't know what your thoughts on this one are, but I also feel Celeste kind of has like we're getting totally off track, but Celeste is worth having. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a good, it's yeah, a good sidetrack here. Right. Huh? But uh, I also feel Celeste is kind of similar to Super Meat Boy in a lot of ways, where it, it has that very, like yeah. that sort of like it's a lot of timing based, and that's right. part of what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's another great game that's it is, yeah. Deserves all the credit it had at the but time. But it's the same sort of thing. If yeah. you're really into those like platformers, you'll love it. But if you're not, and that's the difference for me between like the Super Meat Boys and Celeste, is that I feel like Celeste is accessible. Mm -hmm. Plus the whole story of like overcoming like yeah. depression and everything else. It's a else. beautiful, it, simple story. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's a it's an obvious metaphor, climbing the mountain that you didn't think you could climb. And yeah. You know, the villain is you and all this. You know, it's yeah. It it borders on cheesy if it wasn't so like heartfelt. Yeah. You know? I agree hundred <laughs> percent. Like I feel like if a big studio made Celeste, it would be like the biggest punchline in gaming. It'd be like too obvious. Right, and, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But the fact that it was like, oh, somebody like this is somebody's like, you know, love letter to platforming. Yeah. Which I guess that kind of brings it back around platforming, <laughs> Metro, you know, I'm trying. That's all right. right. We had a little segue. We yeah. go on tangents sometimes. Yeah, we do. It was a good tangent. <laughs> Bringing it back around, though, yeah. what is your number two? Number two. 
Hollow Knight. Fair. I love Hollow Knight, and I know you've just like started playing through Hollow Knight. Um, yeah, I've spent at least, I want to say 50 hours on Hollow Knight. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not one of those people who can like speed run through it. I get wrecked on this one boss when I try to, like, there's the achievements. Mm -hmm. So there's the five hour speed run. And once That's I get to insane. this, yeah. Well, once I get to this one boss, like an hour and a half in, I just, I can't do it without like the upgrades and everything else like that that yeah. normally go through it. But no, I've done 100% of the rest of the game. And I absolutely love that game. Like just the atmosphere, um, the art style, all the different characters, like the fact that there's no words, but like that stupid little guy with his maps humming that you can hear him from like <laughs> yeah. three screens away and you're like, all right, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Or Hornet, like the, you know, the sound she makes when she's attacking you, like everything about it. I mean, obviously, like, if you watch the show before, you understand how big of a Souls fan I am. And that whole, like, fallen world that you go in and explore, almost like an archaeologist, like, mm. I'm always into that. Like, for anything, Shadow of the Colossus, I feel like, has that same, like, draw-in. Um, the upgrade system is just classic Metroidvania to me. Yeah. Get the wall climb, get the double jumps, get dashes, everything yep. else. Like, um... All the different charm system, which is very similar like from what I understand system. to the the, uh, the Ori game. Very similar, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you can build out whatever you want. Gives you that replayability. Um, yeah, I I can't say anything bad about that game except the Path of Pain is like the worst platforming I've ever had to do. And oh I, damn. Yeah, because you need it to get like <clears throat> the true ending of Hollow Knight, hmm. and I wanted to do that. And I'm not like, I'm not a super like platformer person. Like I like them, but I don't like the, you know, you have to be perfect sort of thing. Yeah. So actually getting through that is like one of my like biggest gaming accomplishments <laughs> in my, nice. like I got through it and I was like, I put down my Switch. I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> I can't believe it. Like, where does my life go from here? And this is like the peak. There's some, there's some yeah. challenging platforming in that game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I'm. I think I'm like 13 or 14 hours into it at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, again, like, this is the same thing I had the problem with where, like, I after beating Breath of the Wild, I decided to jump right into Baldur's Gate 3. Mm -hmm. After beating Will of the Wisps, I was, like, decided to jump right into Hollow Knight. Right. So it's like, now I'm just, like, for one, I'm kind of burnt out on this kind of game. Mm -hmm. And then for two, it's like, the thing, I'm, like, more critical about the things that I don't like in this that I like in Ori. Right. So it's like, I hate... I hate when I do that, and like I don't know why I do that. Sometimes it's like, oh, it's just like too much of a good thing. Right. Yeah. But Hollow Knight is great. Um, they're they're very very different games. Mm -hmm. um, Hollow Knight's got almost like just right from the art style, it's got almost kind of like a uh, Castle Crashers or Alien Hominid kind of feel. It's like that. It looks very very similar to yeah, yeah like that, that simple like two yep. D old school Flash kind of animation. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It looks um, like a Newgrounds game. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And uh, it's. Like, it doesn't control as well as Ori, so it's, like, it's not as buttery. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's been times where I'll just get, like, I'll just get, like, caught up or, like, fall into something just yep. because, like, the controls are a little jankier and they're not as responsive. Yep. So, like, but it's it's not it's not the game's fault. It's right. just the way the game is. Yep. So, it's, like, again, coming from that, coming from something that's, like, as smooth as butter to, like, this, it's just, like, it just mm -hmm. moves differently. Right. So it's, like, a totally different way of getting into... Um, it does. Yeah. yeah. It does definitely have, like, that sort of um, older school feel to the movement and everything like that. But I feel like with Hollow Knight, once you... Like, it's a deceptively simple combat. Yes. You know, you can either... But it's complex as hell. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got your forward slash, your up slash, your down slash. That's really it. Yeah. Other than, like, there's a couple sword arts where you can do, like, a charge slash, but that's later. But, you know, putting those all together and when you're fighting, like, some of the tougher enemies at the end and you get the system down, it feels incredible. Yeah. And I think, like, it's, it's, it's interesting, too, that, like, the simplicity of the combat and the way that they design certain things, you don't, like, it, you notice them, like, immediately. Mm -hmm. um, where, like, for example, the, the charm that, makes it so you don't get knocked back yep. when you're when you take a hit. Yeah. Um if you 
get used to playing the game without that charm and you're kind of used to the hitting something and then getting taken back a bit, right. there's almost like a defensive tactic to using that. Mm -hmm. Whereas like equipping that and then you're sort of, when you hit forward to attack, Like you kind of go forward and it you're leaves you open to get hit. You're almost exactly. overstepping. Right. So yeah, the bounce back from you hitting like that's it, simple. Like it is just, a defensive tool. Yeah, yeah, that simple right. little mechanic. Like mm -hmm. it's very it's very fine tuned and there's a lot of thought that goes into each charm. Yeah. So uh, like I'm really enjoying the experience. It's just some of the frustrations with uh, the level design uh, yeah. have been kind of um difficult and and there's a, i've had to look up a lot of like where to go with this one like mm -hmm. more so than i usually do with these kind of games just because i feel yeah. the i i don't feel that sometimes the usually it's very obvious when you can't get into some place because you don't have x thing right but in this game i feel like like you had to like steer me back to the direction i was supposed right. to go because i was like oh i didn't even think of that and yep. then now it's like super obvious to me yeah and um, I actually like you know, from us talking about it, I have like, there's my experience of Hollow Knight from playing all of it and looking back at it. Mm. But from talking to you about the beginning of the game, I like was put back to when I first played it and I had like the same issues of like, where am I supposed to go, yeah. you know? And I feel like part of it is like, they wanted you to feel that way, but I feel like they should have had a little bit more of a direction like they do give you like that lamp that you can eventually buy. Yep. But if you didn't go across the part where it's dark, and then there's another part in like the very bottom, of, I'm not trying to spoil too much, but it's dark as well. Yeah. So you may have thought, oh, I'm supposed to go down here. If you went there and did everything, you, you're too early to do what you need to do. Yeah, and I you also know? think that's all, that's, I think that game also caters to the super hardcore gamer it does, because yeah. the lamp itself costs like 1800 Geo, mm -hmm. which, at the time that you come across it, is you an outrageous it. it's amount an of money. outrageous amount of money, yeah. And like, I yeah. had to grind for that, and I found a spot that took me a while to even be able to do the combat there mm -hmm. successfully enough to be able to grind it out. Right. Uh, because the, like, you, it's hard to find enemies that give you that much money, yep. and the ones that do are hard, so you have to get your skill level up. So, right. like, it's just like this, this constant, like, grind to get that much money and then you buy the thing and then you get to that place and you can only go so far in there because by the time mm -hmm. and this is me grinding kind of early to get it right so by the time i got there i can only go so far into that room because i didn't have the thing i needed next to progress further in that level yeah so it's kind of like you're like you just as soon as you get into the spot where you feel like you're being rewarded for your effort you're punished again and then it's right. like and now it's like, I've already kind of forgotten about that spot. So I think that's kind of one of my frustrations with that game where it's like, like even the parts that you may notice, mm -hmm. you're liable to forget again because by the time you get back to thinking about it, right. like- The map is massive. It's very big. Right, yeah. and like if I didn't love the game so much just because of like, I don't know, the, the charm, how much I like the fighting style, like that is definitely like a major negative to Hollow Knight is the beginning of the game. Yeah. And they could have been a little bit better about like, because there is a way that you have to go. Yes. You know, you have to go this way fairly early and then the game will open up a little bit more. Yeah. You know, it's not like a lot of these games where, you know, either it's going to put you on like soft tracks to go the right way or you can actually go anywhere yeah. and sequence break the whole thing. Like you kind of have to do that without glitching. Or if you're like one of these, you know, I could beat the game in 30 minute people that are world record speed runners. Like yeah. it doesn't, that's like what, I would say that's the major flaw I could find in it is the beginning. It doesn't, it doesn't tell you anything. It's just like, go like yeah and then like the, um, the the other thing i know i mentioned this to you mm -hmm. too is like the uh and, and every one of these games is usually like a teleport system where yep. you know you have a space like mm -hmm. in this case it's like a way station with a giant bug who takes you around the stag station yeah yeah and even yeah. that like i find that there's just not enough of them that mm -hmm. like regardless of like where i am like yep. i always feel like i have to traverse an unnecessarily large amount of the map just to get to some place i need to go yep and like again like that's that's only to the detriment of the game and as far as like it's not the game i just got done playing 
So, right. like again, it's like yeah. it's not it's not like I love I'm loving Hollow Knight, and mm -hmm. I think it's an excellent game. I just it's so hard not to think of like these little things when you just came from something that, that was like it. so right. yeah, yeah 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 like Ori to me was just such a that that was such like a seamless and positive experience all out minus like some misdirection like all of these have right yeah. um, you know it's just like I notice these little things more but it doesn't make the game any less for having them it's yeah. just it's just a different kind of experience and it's like weird to make these slight adjustments where like mm -hmm. like it's like I have to totally readjust my gameplay experience right. to this and I like that I do like that and it's yep. a really excellent game it's beautiful yeah I, I'm actually I want to see as you get farther in the game if you still have that opinion mm. because you have to like keep in mind like the amount of space that you've gone over in those 12 hours is probably if I had to estimate like a tenth that's crazy. So how long, map. what would you say the uh, like, completion is like on your first playthrough on that game? Just a playthrough, like not 100%, just getting to an ending. Mm. Uh, 40, 50 oh, hours. Wow. Damn. It's, yeah, especially if you're not, you know, looking everything up. And, you know, once you get past where you are, I feel like it, it kind of tells you more or less, it gives you a goal, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I would say it would probably take the average person 40 to 50 hours to beat it the first time. Damn. So yeah. yeah, I'm definitely nowhere near like the level of, uh, like you said, like once it's like starts, to, it's already starting to open up more. Right. But I feel like it's probably gonna open up even more. So well, you're gonna get more yeah. abilities that make you move, you know, move through the world faster. You'll figure out ways to get through, like you know, oh, this stag station's here. I need to go here. I know how to move through all of these screens yeah. the quickest way. You know. Yeah. Like you exponentially get faster the better you get at the game and the more you know. And that's true in any of these. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. You know, if you're playing through any of the GBA Castlevanias, the first level it takes you forever to get through, and then yeah. by the time at the end you're, you know, back dashing through the entire thing like it's nothing. The old back dash. The old back dash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah. So number two. That, um, yeah, your number two. Let's hear it. My number two is going to be Symphony of the Night. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's get into it. Uh, you haven't mentioned Symphony of the Night, so I'm, I'm going to assume that's your number one. Well, that's an assumption. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, the one question on my mind is, how is this not number one? Um, I, think, I think that's your question as well, if you're <laughs> at home watching. Um, it, only because... The other, my number one is a game I've played just as many times. Okay. Um, Symphony of the Night is a, it's a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. um, it is, I remember when that game came out. Um, I was like 17 when that game came out. And uh, my buddy, like his brother had it. And like, we were just like blown away by that game. Like, it was right. the most beautiful thing like I yeah. think anybody had seen at the time. Um, and just playing through that for the first time and like the just like the the way that game progresses mm -hmm. uh, and i love how like you start off tough and then it just like right away strips I you of everything that. you shall regret those words we will meet again <laughs> what <laughs> and i love when games do that <laughs> yeah. it's so cool because it gives you like and just to get out of the way, yes, it's my number one, so we don't have to like go back and <laughs> forth and dance around it. Yeah, Symphony of Night's my number one. Um, but yeah, because like when a game does that, it's like this is what you're going to be. Yeah. Right? It gives you something to work towards and it gives you that little bit of time where you're playing around with it and you're like, whoa, this guy can turn to a wolf and a bat and you know, all this cool stuff. Yeah. You know, I love when games do that, but no, you continue. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I love the sense of progression in that game. Mm -hmm. I love the sense of exploration in that game. There is just, there's almost like a secret on every oh, yeah. screen in that game. Yeah, there um, really is. Yeah. The um, level up sound and the way like the screen, oh, yeah, like that slight, you know. Even the pause. loading screen has like yeah. an Easter egg in it where you hold the controller and mm -hmm. like makes the text move and stuff. Yep. Um, there's just so much to that game. And like the bad voice acting is also <laughs> excellent. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? 
Like, <laughs> didn't they take that out of like some of the the, the remakes? Yes, the version I have, I have, um, I have it on the PlayStation five four. Okay, it's um, it's a completely redubbed version of it. Dracula, die now and leave this world. You'll never belong here. Ha! Mankind, a cesspit of hatred and lies. Fight for them, then, and die for their sins. Mm. So they redubbed it a few years ago, and that's the one that I have on there. So I, I immediately went out and spent like a hundred bucks and bought it on the PlayStation because yeah. I wasn't gonna have that. Because we understood at that point, it was like, yeah, they paid some guy five bucks to. <laughs> this is before Google Translate. Like, yeah, they're just like, yeah, what does this say? And he's like, miserable pile of secrets. Like, <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Are you sure? Like, <laughs> yeah, why not? All right, why let's not? go with it. Oddly enough, I think the best version of this game is the uh the sega saturn one it's got more stuff right? it has more stuff there's yeah. a whole nother section of the map uh, yeah. that's not on the playstation one uh, is that on the remake do you know if it's that that is a good question i don't actually know we should look into that yeah that's yeah. a good question um <sighs> because everybody plays it ps1 that's like yeah. the quintess that's the way to you know go about yeah. it i remember when i had my saturn when i, when I was like 20 Mm -hmm. uh, I remember playing it on the the Saturn and just being like, I was like, wait, what? I was like, there's like a whole other section of the game, and mm -hmm. like it was just amazing to me. Um, but yeah, man, like, I mean, the Richter mode. Yep. Uh, my favorite way to play that game is the luck code. You start out with the luck code yep. as your name, right? And it makes it so you can uh, get the Chrysogrim, mm -hmm. which is the best weapon in the game. It's just like a series of blades that right. just yeah. like you annihilate everything yeah. with the Chrysogrim. <laughs> So next to impossible to get that weapon mm -hmm. without the luck code in that game or just right. juicing up your luck as much as you can. Yep. But uh, it's it's just the most fun way to play that game after you've played it through the regular way. But right, you go back and yeah. you do it the overpowered, like rip through everything. Oh, it's the best. I mean, it just, it puts so many like staples of the genre, yeah. you know, in there. And that's why like... I feel like I rated it number one in Super Metroid only got five because Super Metroid is like, here's, you know, the foundation. This is everything that's there. But, you know, the different modes for putting your name in differently. That's yeah. in like every single one of these games after that, you know? Yeah. Like Alucard is arguably the most overpowered of the protagonists, like the magic and... It you makes know. sense. He's a, he's a vampire, right, which is yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. I mean, just the fact that his name is, you know, Dracula backwards <laughs> yeah. and all this. Like, yeah, it's dope. Like, it is really cool. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it almost deserves like a second, you know, it's like the second founder of, you know, it's the Augustus to... Metroid's Romulus or something like that, uh, dude. That uh, absolutely and like remember like remember finding like remember when you like when you think you beat like the other thing too is like if you don't do like the clock tower bit the mm -hmm. proper way, which you never would have yeah, known you, how to do. No, right. you never would have known right. how to do that. Yeah. You need like the silver clock and the gold clock. Yeah, you have to go to the clock room and if you don't use those, like you don't beat the game properly. You actually the game and you don't even unlock the second castle. Right. Um, but yeah, like. The only way you ever knew any of that stuff back in the day was like through the school or like, you know, you'd yeah, someone had a new yeah, word of mouth. Yeah, like, uh, you know, the gaming magazines, tips and tricks, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then when you actually like do that correctly and like it unlocks a whole like the inverted castle. And, right. And you're like, what? Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like half the game is done. It's right. crazy. Yeah. There's so much stuff in that that was like a mind blowing thing that like once you got, because, you know, Harmony Distance, same thing, double castle. Like, yeah. you're almost like, all right. Where's the second half? Like, 100% is not 100% yeah. in a Castlevania game after Symphony of the Night. Like, yeah, I think, like, I think the power progression, too, in that game was the... Uh, it still hasn't been touched. Like, the turning to mist, mm -hmm. and then you get, like, poison mist, and yep. then, like, the wolf, and, like, there's just, like, so many cool things in the way you... The powers that you get in that game. On top of having, like, the item system, and, right. and like, the weapons, and the yeah. armor, and, like... That game just gave you everything. Yeah. And uh, it's it's still, like, an absolute delight. Like, nothing about that game, aside from the the wonky uh, dialogue, is, like, <laughs> yeah. really... But it's so good that the experience. dialogue yeah. makes it, like, it's good because it's around so much good stuff. Yeah. It's, like, it's a magnificent yeah. game. No, I feel like every Metroidvania, in a way, after that game has been trying to 
Make that game or outdo yeah. it, you know? <laughs> yep. All the powers in Hollow Knight are the powers from Symphony of the Night, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, there's, I can't say anything bad about that game. Yeah, if you've never played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, do that immediately. Take, yeah. take work off tomorrow and do that, and don't go back until you've beaten it. Yeah, if That's, you like any of these games that we've been talking about, or anything we've mentioned, not even on the list, like, you should go play that game. It is that good. And you've already established your number one is yeah, we just went, Castlevania. Uh, we switched up the format there. So I, the yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think it's going to come as any surprise. It's a snake draft here. <laughs> yeah. Back um, to you. Yeah, it's Super Metroid. Mm, okay. Yeah. All right. I want to hear, like, why? Because it's the first? Is that the... It, it not only is it, I think it's not only just because it's the first, but I, I still don't think there's been a Metroid game that's been as good as that, aside from Metroid Prime. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's very different. It's very different, but yeah. it, like, it managed to capture the essence of Super Metroid. And okay. I don't think any other Metroid game since has really been able to capture the flavor of Super Metroid. Yeah. Um, it was so, like, dark. Yes. You know, Nintendo doesn't get that dark even when they try to get dark. Yeah. But Super Metroid, like, yeah, I don't know what it is about that game, but it it reminds me so much of, like, you know, the Alien movies. Yes. Like, that weird otherness of all these creatures, like... Being lost in space by yeah, yourself. Yeah, and, like, the space in pirates were, like, yeah. creepy in that. The, like, Metroid Prime's a great game, but I don't feel like that same, like, dread yeah. that I felt going through Super Metroid. Yes. Like, you really are in a hostile environment where like modern nintendo i don't think you know does that sort of feeling very well you're very rarely yeah. scared in a nintendo game but you were creeped out the entire time you're going through super metroid as a kid. thousand percent yeah you had no idea what was in the next room and you you almost didn't want to like look yeah. you know you had to psych yourself up a couple times to or even like I don't know about you, but like that morph ball, I always felt so claustrophobic going yeah. through some of those tunnels, like which makes no sense. <laughs> it's not like you know Samus is going to get stuck or something, or yeah. you know. But it well, was just the, that feeling the, when, it, you, when you're in the morph ball and you fall through that part that you can't get back up from, mm -hmm. and you're just like, yeah. oh, you like, there's no turning back now. Right. You don't know what's yeah. like. I've got like three bars of health left. Yeah. Like, what's going to happen? Yep. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, yeah. all right, yeah, yeah. I, I, I this, this one for me. Um, Super Metroid is like if I had to make a list of like top five games just ever, it mm -hmm. would it would have to be on that list just because like it's one of the games I've beaten the most. Yep, I've I've beaten that game like dozens of times. Yeah, like it's okay. I always go back to it. That sense of atmosphere, just like though even like the opening, like the way it opens and like that mm -hmm. tense like. Yeah. the way that like title song comes in yep uh just like the that, that like you were saying like that atmosphere that mm -hmm. dread like that that and like the sense of progression in that game oh yeah is so good and i don't think any other metroid game has come close to that like, no it's it's just such a perfect game and like the anime the graphics still look great the music's mm -hmm. incredible yeah uh, all the powers you get are awesome and like the way that you progress through them and like the way you can upgrade the powers after you've gotten them right um it's just a very rewarding game to play, and it's it's one I consistently come back to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so hard to for me to make a better game than that, and I, I just it's it's what I remember like being a kid and like when I was getting into surround sound and stuff like that when I was like fourteen yeah. and buying speakers. I remember like um, I like my stepdad at the time had like these crazy like tower speakers mm -hmm. and like I snuck out and like they, well, they went my parents went away for a little while and I took them and put them in my room and hooked them up to like my sound system so I could like <laughs> play that game with like crazy sound yep. and it was like that, that's how much I love that game is I was always trying to get more of an experience out of that game whether it was like with sound or a better TV or right. whatever I could do to make that experience like more engrossing and just mm -hmm. like more hard hitting like I was always after that because I love that game so much and, yeah it's it's one of those games that just means like the absolute world to me. It is like it's to me it's a prime example of 
just because it's old doesn't mean it's still not better than anyone who's tried to do it before. Because like, even Metroid hasn't been able to properly no. emulate right. Super Metroid. No. And I don't... I can't really put my finger on why they can't. Because they're obviously trying to. I mean, we said yeah. Dread like eight times when we're talking about Metroid. They made a Metroid called Metroid Dread. Like, yeah, and I, I didn't yeah. love that one. Yeah, I thought it was good, but I didn't yeah. think it was great. Yeah, same. And yeah. I, I don't know how they can make something even, you know, approaching Super Metroid. I mean, it sounds like I think it's not very good because I rated it five, but that's, you know, it's no. the top five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is, you know, yeah. a lot of my list was just, I like this game a lot. Yeah. There wasn't any actual, like, this should be, you know, higher. Um, it is one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, like if I would put it top five of all time, but Super Nintendo had such a crazy library it's that crazy. it's like, <laughs> yeah, it would definitely hit the top 10. Um, but yeah, no, great game. Like if you haven't played it, you should like immediately, like <laughs> yeah. hook up a Super Nintendo, hook up a PlayStation, take your socks off and play Metroid and Symphony of Night. Yeah. simultaneously Dude, and however you, you decide to play up to do yeah. yeah like if you want to play like the beautiful thing about the super metroid is i can't recommend playing it this way enough is like i got a big giant beautiful 77 inch tv that on the switch retro consoles is they put it on that and it's uh, you can play it and it's beautifully like mm. per, it plays beautifully on a modern tv yep but if you also want to play it on like an old CRT tv that's like a great way to play it as well uh, I don't think there's any wrong way to experience either of those games. Right. Um, I don't know. Personally, I, I don't know what it is, but just turning on the CRT and feeling that hum from it, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. I can't play anything older than, you know, 360 era without, you know, feeling like I'm missing a little something not yeah. doing it. Like, I know it's it's all, like, Pavlovian or something, but, like, <laughs> I need that weird electromagnetic radiation emanating from in front of me to yeah. feel right. Dude, like, it's... This is such a, a great genre, and I, I'm looking forward to, like, more games as they come out that it, yeah. they continue to try to innovate or do, actually do innovate. Right. But honestly, like, I don't know how much further you can take this genre, but, um, like... There's some games that have tried, which I know we talked about maybe doing like a honorable mentions list. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, one of the there's a couple that immediately come to mind for me is uh, I played um, Record of Lotus War. Okay. Uh, they made a Deedlet game. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you ever see Record of Lotus War? The anime? Yeah. Okay. So I love that. Yeah. The anime, it's, it's one of my it's favorite amazing. animes. It's really yeah. cool, yeah. Great fantasy anime. If yeah. you've never seen Record of Lotus War. But be wary. Watch the OST. Not, not the OST. What are they called? The OVA. Mm. Watch that one because they made a second Record of Lotus War, which kind of is the first one, but it just sucks. It's bad. They made two of them. <laughs> two ver there's two versions of Record of Lotus War. Watch the one from like 90 four or whatever is the early yeah, one. The only one I remember is watching on like VHS when I was a kid. So yeah, great, was, great anime. It, I was blown away. But yeah. they made like a cool uh, Symphony of the Night pixel art style, uh, the uh, Metroidvania and you play as Deedlet and mm -hmm. it's, it's not great, but it's beautiful and yep. like it's, it's fun. And right. like it's, it's definitely worth checking out. Mm -hmm. you, I'll never play it again, right. but like it's definitely worth that one, one, yeah. one playthrough. Definitely fun. Yeah. I think my issue with the genre is I get like hyper fixated when I'm playing any of these games, you know, like I won't just play it through and get my, you know, 15, 40, 60 hours. Like I want to do absolutely yeah. everything in one of the, if I play it for 10 hours, I'm going to play it for a hundred. You know? Yeah. So, like, the, you know, just the ones we talked about today, like Axiom Verge, Sunder, like, all of these games that I haven't gotten to yet, I will get to them, but it's going to, like, that's going to be my gaming time for at least two to three months. Like, I'm going to get hyper fixated on all of these games when I play them. Yeah. Like, that, uh, that Ender Lilies I might start with, because I was just looking at that, and, but, yeah, that's how I get with all of them. I want, you know, I want to find every nook and cranny. Yeah. 
that stupid map percentage, if it goes up 0.1%, I'm fine in every room. Like yeah. I, I have to, you know? So, but as far as like the future of the genre, yeah, it's tough because they've tried, you know, um, there's like we were talking about, there's arguments to be made of different, like 3D, mm. like what's a 3D, you know, Metroid Prime, I guess you could say, but yeah. it's a very different feel compared to, you know, what we've been talking about as, you know, Metroidvania propers, you know? And Metroid Prime's a weird, like, just that game in itself is like a weird anomaly because like, yeah. nothing has, that was basically Super Metroid, that, like you said, it is like a Metroidvania. It's mm -hmm. very much, that's the most Metroid a game has felt aside from Super Metroid. That is a 3D representation of Super Metroid. That game is, that game has no right being as good as it is and as stand out as it is. That, right. like, nothing has done that since, I don't think. Yeah. That's a weird game that just sits on like a shelf of its own, like mm -hmm. just that no one is bothered to try to emulate. It's, right. That's a weird, weird, perfect game. Yeah, yeah, it is really good. But yeah, like you're saying, like, I feel like the genre sort of limits itself, you know, because yeah. there are like, oh, you have to have these. You know, if if you need some sort of unlock progression, like your exploration is going to be locked behind a double jump, for example. Yep. There's only so many ways you can do a double jump, you know? Like, it's going to take some... It's like, how do you reinvent the wheel? Yes. You know, it's got to be circular, yep. you yep. know? If you make it a square, it's just going to suck. Yeah, and that's, like, and that's, that's the big problem with... I think the only thing, really, that differentiates... Um, anything in this particular genre now is going to be like how visually like if it has a unique visual style yeah it's atmosphere and, and it's narrative yeah. honestly narrative yeah most of these are pretty narrative weak mm -hmm. um so oh, if you yeah. can that's why i think i enjoyed ori so much and it stood out so much to me is because it was like it was just, again that simple that simple narrative but it's just like so heartfelt that like you can't help but be touched by like what it's doing and like right. the world it throws you in is so beautiful and just like well designed and like mm -hmm. the fact that it uses like animals as like these sacred spirits that when they talk they bellow and like they're just larger than life and yep. like they're, there's like a there's like a power and an awe to that game and the way it has like a reverence for nature and just mm -hmm. like it, it, it's a very beautiful game and like that immediately just like resonated with me and just yep. stood out and was unique um so i think that you know moving forward the genre like you have to have some element of that or mm -hmm you know, create something that's more immersive because that's, I think that's the thing that makes these either a success or a failure is like how, how immersed are you? Like how, right. how invested are you in actually progressing and putting in the work to yeah. unlock the thing you have to? Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, that's what I personally love about, you know, the genre is just the exploration of it. You know, you're in, and that's what's, like just going back to Hollow Knight where we're talking about the beginning of the game losing points because it doesn't really show you where to go. Mm. But that's a lot of like the core of those games is you don't know where to, you know, you're an explorer uh. in a hostile environment, you know? Like, I don't know how to solve that problem. You know, it's almost like a Gordian knot sort of thing where it's like you need to leave you know, exploration up to the player, but you also have to make them not feel frustrated by, you know, lack of progress if they keep going the wrong way. That's that's an interesting way to point out some of those. So it makes me it makes me actually wonder now if that's like intentional with Hollow Knight or if mm -hmm. it's just honestly like a a byproduct of trying to do something that's uh, like uniquely its own or if that was like actually intended from the beginning to kind of give you like these frustrations to actually make you want to progress right I, I, but i also feel like yeah, that is interesting because if that is intentional it's like it's kind of almost from the get-go uh, like separating the people who are going to be casual about it or mm -hmm. actually have done this genre before right and want to progress further um and then just kind of kicking the noobs to the curb or if you're a noob and it's your first go around and like this sort of this gets you in, in into it. Then yeah, if that's, it gets your hooks in. Then, that's, the, right, then yeah. that formula is exactly what makes you want to play these in the exactly. first place. So that yeah. is, I, mean, I wonder if that is intentional or just sort of... Right. Yeah. yeah, because, I mean, I feel like that's, like, just, you know, thinking back and looking at it, a lot of them are very linear yeah. in the beginning, and then you unlock one of the traversal skills, you yeah. know, 
wall double jump bar or you know wall jump or something that opens things up and hollow knight doesn't follow that formula but yeah i would be really interested if team cherry like ever said anything about like yeah we just wanted you to you know look around and figure it out yeah i think like that that aspect of things like and that like you're like one of the things you were talking about like with uh progression that feels natural and just sort of not necessarily guided but mm -hmm. i think when to bring up metroid again and uh specifically super metroid and why that's so important to me is like i replayed um after playing metroid prime i picked up the remastered metroid prime and i was just i was just just as blown away playing it again yeah, like after 15 job. years it's yeah. that game's perfection yeah uh, but it made me want to go back, and I played Metroid Fusion again, mm -hmm. and I didn't really like Metroid Fusion as much as I used to. Like that used mm -hmm. to be one of my favorites. Uh, it's very, very linear. To was the that point, the GBA? Yeah, with the blue and yellow yep. suit one. Okay, yeah. Super linear to the point where it's 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 kind of dull. Right. And uh, like how it'll lock you out after after like getting the thing you need in the first place. How it'll just be like, oh, security shut down, and then you can't get back to the places that you would want to explore now that you have mm -hmm. this. And then by the time you can, it's like story based, and then you can't really go back there anyway. Because, right. like, at the end, by the time at the end of that game, you get all the things you need to be able to finally go to these places you want to explore. The game cuts you off, and you have to go to the end. And I was like, uh, You're missing the point. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I, I felt like that game was just kind of. Mm -hmm. trying to push you to the finish line rather than actually make you want to explore. Right. Uh, which I thought was odd because I remember really loving that game back in the day. Mm -hmm. And then um, Metroid Dread being the newest one. Yep. I, that one just kind of, I found myself more frustrated and annoyed with the difficulty mm -hmm. rather than enjoying the experience of like actually going through the map. Right. Um, because, you know, you're you're getting pushed by this thing that's just trying to get you to the next spot where you're just going to be locked out anyway mm -hmm. but they make it so frustrating because it's such a pain in the ass to get around this thing right that it's not it's not even fun it's just like i just need to get to this other room so i can keep playing this game and yeah. that sense of irritation right like was my whole experience with that game i was just consistently irritated as i progressed through that game and right. i never enjoyed it yeah the experience was just always irritating mm -hmm. and that is so frustrating and in, in a game that was so like loved by everybody when that came out and yeah then... it was it was but i also feel like like i don't know this is getting way off into the weeds but you know modern gaming opinions just feel how much of it is going to be you know pushed by influencers or fabricated by you know marketing and everything else like that you know like time will tell if metroid dread is a great game or a horrible game mm. you know um but, you know, back towards what we were talking about, I feel like that exploration part is, like, the key to the whole thing. Yeah. And being able to explore on, you know, your own, your own time frame. You can sit there and you can farm XP or currency or whatnot in your own little spot where, yeah. you know, you're just chilling and vibing. Um, I feel like that's what those games are really about. Like, yeah, if it's pushing you towards some sort of goal, or if you feel like you're, you know, being led, you have blinders put on, you're locked out of this area, that area, like, it stops feeling like a Metroidvania at that point. Yeah. Even if it's a Metroid game. Yeah. Yeah, I have, uh, yeah, that's, I totally agree with you, and I think, uh, I have one more, like, uh, game that I, w I would recommend to people to check out, um, and that's uh, Blasphemous. Um, there's two of them now. I mm -hmm. still haven't beaten the first one, which is why I have, even though I owned it and I bought it the <laughs> day it came out, I have not played the second one yet. No. Uh, Blasphemous is, uh, I find it to be very frustrating. Uh, it's very challenging. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. The anim It's got some of the best like animation in, in a Metroidvania I've ever seen. The story is so cool. It's super grim dark. Like it is very yeah grim dark Spanish Catholic. Yeah. yeah. It's it's so amazing and it frustrates me to the point where i don't want to play it 
sometimes, <laughs> which is why I haven't beaten it yet. I find yeah. that game to be very, I, I get, it's another game where it's like, I want to enjoy it more than I do. Yep. Uh, and it's mainly just because it aggravates me so much. Like the difficulty is so, it's just so much that it, it, it there's like a souls element to that game too. Right. Yeah. There's which makes that game that. Yeah. infuriating sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting you brought up Blasphemous, though, because it is one that's often, you know, said to be part of the genre, but in my personal opinion, I feel like it doesn't check all the right boxes. How so? Um, it reminds me more of, like, Infernax. Really? Yeah, where it's, like, it's a super difficult game. You're going to, you know, be fighting through monsters and everything else, um, and I... Honestly, I put Blasphemous down pretty quickly. It just didn't click with me. But from what I was, you know, going through, it didn't seem like it really had that sort of exploration element to it. It was more of like a just fight through, get to the boss, fight the next one, so on and so forth. Mm. So I, because I've heard, you know, all the time, and when I heard of Blasphemous, I picked it up immediately because I was like, all right, it's got, you know, Dark Souls. You got like a cool parry system. Guy looks awesome. Yeah. All the boss designs I saw was wicked cool. Yeah. Like that whole like dark side of Catholicism, Spanish Inquisition-y sort yeah. of stuff is wicked, wicked cool. The atmosphere, the atmosphere, the atmosphere for days amazing. in that game. Yeah. yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. And then I picked up the game and started playing it and like the movement and everything else. I was just like... The movement's very janky. But it is, it's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very... That's, that's part of the frustration of that mm. game too where it's yeah. like I... I want to love that game, right. and like I need to finish it, but it's one of those games I'm gonna have to like force myself to finish, yeah. which is frustrating because right. like it's all there, but it's just like yep. there's something about it that I just it's like I don't I don't want to play it, and that's yeah. that's frustrating. But I, I want to say that as like a recommend because <laughs> the, for the people I feel that will like gravitate towards that game, and right. like it's like it's got its claws like three quarters of the way in me, but yeah. like playing it, I always just. I've restarted that game at least seven times. Mm. That divine will, equally pious and cruel, which we could not and will never be able to unravel, was called the miracle. Mm. Yeah. And I just like, I'll get to a point and I just stop playing it because it's just like, I'll either get overwhelmed by the progression where it's like, now that I've unlocked this thing, I know I can go here, I can go here, I can go yeah. here, but it's pushing me in this direction. It's like, but, and that's what you want in a Metroidvania, but at the same time, like, the, the, the controls or, like, just, like, there's a frustration with that game that gets, like, when you die, you have to go back to your body. and you get, It's just, yep. the, like, the, the dark, the extra element with the Dark Souls, I think, is too much of a punishing negative to a game that's already frustratingly difficult. Right. Where it's, like, it's almost like a, it's, like, decentralizing you to, like, want to keep going. It's, yeah. it's frustrating. I feel like there is like a certain element to that. Like if the, like the first time you go through an area in any of these games, I think it should be challenging. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to re-traverse it, I feel like it should be, you know. Easy. Easy. Yep. And I feel like Blasphemous, and again, like if you're a big Blasphemous fan, I haven't played a lot of it. This is just my opinion from 10 hours of gameplay. It shouldn't be that difficult you know, going back to this area or that area, it like until you get to the point of like, you know, the cusp of the un unknown, it shouldn't be difficult for you to get back there. Yeah, you know? should, yeah, there should be like a scale you, of right. like difficulty. It should be like, all right, I know this area where I've been through already. I know how to fight all these monsters. Like, and then once I get to the part that's now unlocked from ability X, yeah, then it should be hard. It should be a cakewalk to get there. Yeah. And I feel like because Dark Souls became, and I feel like Dark Souls actually like that if you actually play through the games. Like the first time you go through, you know, the Undead Berg, it's really hard in Dark Souls 1. Mm. But when you're at the end of the game and you're running through just because, like, you, it's nothing. And I feel like Blasphemous doesn't feel that way to me. I totally agree. That sense of, like, yeah. difficulty is consistently there. Right. Which makes... Which is great if you want to be consistently stressed out and on edge, but like, no. when, but like part of what you said, like part of the, these games is the sense of progression mm -hmm. and feeling tougher than you were when you first started. Right. And with that game, it's like I know I've got more skills and I've got all this stuff, but I still don't feel any tougher, and I'm 
I might die at the beginning of the level than mm -hmm. than I would at the, the hardest part now because it's just still right. a pain in the ass. It's just a difficult game. Yeah. yeah. Which again, for those who you like like crippling punishing difficulty, mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's a frustrating game because it's like there's it's among. I have to give it credit for being like among the best, but it's just like it's not quite my flavor, but right. it's like it is. So I keep getting like drawn to it, and every time I play it, I'm just like ah. Yeah. Which is why I think like I might. If I, I can't go through and beat it like this this current playthrough, mm -hmm. I might just just dive right into the second one because from what I understand, a lot of people don't like the second one as much because the second one is actually a little bit more forgiving. Oh, so that might yeah. actually make yeah. the world and the experience right. a little bit more enjoyable. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I I mean I can see that, and again I do like hard games, mm -hmm. but there is a certain point where it's like, you know, it's almost like bullet sponge enemies in certain games. It's yeah. like this isn't you know. I don't want to sit here and grind to get to the new part. Like, let me get there and then challenge me is how I, like, prefer it, I guess. And but, it's weird, like, being yeah. so... Like, you and I both like hard games. So, yeah. Like, yeah. The, but there is, like, a weird, like, definitive line in the sand between, mm -hmm. like, punishing and not fun right. versus a challenge that is going to be more difficult than your average game. Right. Like, and that's that's a weird line, but it's... It, it is a very weird line. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's definitely a line. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it really is. Like... I feel like Infernax did it well. Yes. If we're gonna talk about, I don't. Yeah, I was actually like thinking like we were talking about how the genre can move forward, and it's it might be a change of definition, mm. kind of like how rogue lights now exist versus rogue likes. Yeah. You know, that there may be you know if there's certain rules we can bend around the genre that might open things up. I don't know. It's just a throwaway, but um, yeah, Infernax like. I love that game. It does, it, but it has a good progression. You know, like, if you go to the early areas at the end of Infernax, you're just like, it's nothing. Yeah. You just blast through it, you know? I feel like that game is very tightly tuned. Yes. And uh, that game wears, to me, like, that game's Castlevania 2. Yeah. For the NES. Yeah. Except actually good. Uh, yeah. Um, that, that game's... I love Castlevania 2 for a lot of reasons, but I hate that game so much. <laughs> um, that game is just a weird, vague, yep. like poorly translated, you never oh, know yeah. what the hell is going on, but mm -hmm. it's beautiful music, great idea, but oh, Infernax yeah. takes all that and just, that game's amazing. Yeah, it amazing is. Amazing game. Yeah. And uh, you should also play Agelos. Yeah. Agelos is another, I would, Agelos is an amazing game. Mm. Um, and I still have not beaten it. I'm like the very last boss. I have 100%ed everything. I have all the best armor, the best equipment, all of my hearts, all of my magic. Yep. And I decided to play the, my game on my first playthrough on the hardest video, the hardest setting, and I cannot beat the end boss. And Ooh. every time I try to play it, I've either forgotten how to really play the game effectively, yep. and I'm just like, cool. I paint. I've just like just painted myself into a corner. Right. Like it's, it's that that is an amazing game that I absolutely cannot recommend. If especially if you like Infernax, a jealous. Yeah. 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 I'll check it out. Yeah. I always hate when I do that with games. Like, I remember playing um, Sekiro, and I got to a certain boss in the New Game Plus, mm. and I got frustrated and put it down for a couple months. And then I came back, and I was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not as good at this game as I was when I was playing it hardcore yeah. three months ago, and I am never beating this file. Yeah. Like, it, it, that's the worst. Yeah. After, after I like sink it all that time. Right, you gotta like, restart. Yeah, if I want to yeah. be jealous, I have to play it again. You gotta restart. And yeah. I feel like it's okay to play it on very easy now because I've done You've done it all. I've done it right, all, but yeah. like that end boss fight is just miserable. Well maybe after you, you know, get your sea legs back, you'll be able to you know <laughs> maybe you'll beat it on easy and then go back and beat it on hard. You guys have a copy of it over there. I recommend checking that out. I'll check it out. Uh, yeah. I'll hide in the back room. room. I think you'd like that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think um, that's, I mean, that's our list. What do you think? What are your top five Metroidvanias? Put it down in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. There hey, it is. There yeah. it is. Self promotion. What do you got, man? Where are we? Tell where can people come check us out? We are in Kingston, New Hampshire. So 160 Main Street. Come by any day, 11 to 7. Except Monday, I won't be here and the door will be locked. But any other time, come in. Check everything out. We got an arcade. We got plenty of games. If you just want to come in and talk about video games for you know a couple hours, I'll I'll be here. It's got nowhere to go. No captive audience. <laughs> yeah, this place is amazing, and we're gonna have. Uh, we recently did a tour video 
I'm putting the final touches on getting that up, so um, you'll be able to check it out, get like a virtual tour of the store. But this place is, this is, this is one of the greatest used video game stores you will ever see. I, I've seen so many of them in this place, just, this place rules. Thanks. Yeah, you guys have got a hell of a place. It's fun. <laughs> he says, is the man who's been surrounded by too many video games. <laughs> uh, the worst part is you don't have time to play them. Yeah. But, but I think things have been like finally, like this place has been a work in progress, like for about a year. So mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. finally just got to the point where everything's kind of, kind of found its home. So hopefully you get a little bit more time to yeah. enjoy some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Uh, I got a, I got a list just from this, uh, this conversation. So many games. Yeah, it's going to take me like six months to obsessively beat every single one of them. Yeah. Well, I hope you do. I hope you get that chance. Yeah, me too. dive into some stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that's it, man. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, let's go play some games. Let's do it. All right. Peace. Yeah.